It's time, time for Tech, tech to, to Remember's remember. Vintage Camcorder Edition. The camera recording me right now has a 50 megapixel sensor. This one has a 60 megapixel sensor. And this one has a 100 megapixel sensor. And this camera has a 3.3 megapixel sensor. And this camera has a 5 megapixel sensor. So they must be right? Well, in this full review of these two cameras, we're going to test them, and the results may surprise. I love surprises. Turns out that these old cameras are starting to get popular again. This camera looks awfully close to the camera we're going to test, doesn't it? I'll have what she's having. I chose these two cameras to review right now because they both have very different, interesting shapes, but both very cool looking in their own right. These pictures were taken with a Sony digital camera in the early 2000s that I had. I can't remember the exact model number. I want to see how the pictures taken with these digital cameras can stack up to today's standards. So we're going to test these two. No, not these two. These two. These are not the exact same cameras I owned. They're long gone. But I bought them on eBay at what I thought a pretty reasonable price. They came with the original box. Came with this pretty cool cyber shot case. So 2001, Sex and the City was the most popular show, but no, you couldn't watch it on Netflix. Netflix was a service where you rented a DVD and had to return it. So that's when this model, the S75, came out. It was a successor to the S70, very similar, just some cosmetic changes. So I think it's a pretty cool looking camera. I mean, it's, it's chunky, but it's small enough to fit into a small bag. It's definitely not pocketable. Uh, but the thing about it is it does have a zoom and the range covers 7 to 21 millimeters. Now, that's not in full frame terms. That's 34 to 102 is actually in full frame terms. So that's a pretty good range because it does cover the 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter focal lengths, which photographers love to have. It has an optical viewfinder. This is just for framing purposes. It's not an electronic viewfinder, but there is a rear screen on the back. The screen does not tilt and it's a very low resolution screen, 180,000 dots. So street price for this camera was about $700 in 2001. I picked it up for about 70, so about 10 times the difference. Prices have been coming down. So the lens proudly displays the Carl Zeiss name on it. Sony likes to use high quality lenses on their cameras and there was no exception even back in the day. Also a fast 2.0 to 2.5 aperture. That's not bad considering it goes out to 102 millimeters. Now the zoom rocker switch is on the back. It's not great, it's very small, not very recessed. There is a hot shoe on top of the camera, but you have to use a proprietary Sony flash. But fortunately, the camera does come with a built-in flash. What a nice feature for those of us that are a little um, forgetful. It's called stupidity. The rear of the camera is where most of the controls are. There is an exposure button that you can press and there's a little wheel. So if you want to make adjustments to your exposure, you easily can. You can go into the menu to adjust basic functions like white balance. ISO goes to a maximum of 400 and that's it. Minimum shutter speed is 1 1,000th 1, of a second. Now this camera doesn't use SD cards. These purple things are called memory sticks. This one here in my hand is a 64 megabyte stick and it actually comes with a 64 megabyte stick, which is kind of nice because most cameras actually do not come with any memory card. Now this is megabytes, not gigabytes. You'll store about 30 photos on a 64 megabyte versus 30,000 if it were a 64 gigabyte card. That's where the technology really shows its age. So for an all day shoot, you're gonna need multiple memory sticks to carry with you because the largest was only 128 megabytes. They did come out with larger sticks, but those weren't compatible with this camera. And yes, you can get a memory stick reader still on Amazon. The camera does have a basic PASM dial we're all familiar with, minus the P, which is the program auto mode. There is a basic scene mode and a setup mode, which you can control some basic settings like what format the movie mode is gonna be in, digital zoom, on and off, etc. I really like the little sub window at top, which tells you your settings in real time, like f-stop and shutter speed, and that is the charging port. 
Fortunately, the camera uses a battery you can get replacements for today. It was the old Sony M series battery, which is readily available. Now let's take the camera out to a street fair and test it. A little karaoke, anyone? I'm so unkind, and life is so cruel now you here beside me. Let's move on from this, please, shall we? Tried to get a shot of this guy's french fries, but came out blurry. I may have just been too close or maybe just a misfocus. I like how this girl's yellow outfit matches the yellow awning. So I thought this would be a good color test for the camera, and I think it did a good job right here depicting the yellow. Now there is a little bit of a delay after you take a shot. You have to wait a couple of seconds for the camera to process it. It says recording after you take the shot, so you can't take rapid fire shots. Now I think this shot was a little blurry because I had the digital zoom on. Hey, this is New York. You'll see just about everything. If your subject is close, I really recommend turning down the flash level to low. Otherwise, your shots are going to look something like this, especially if they have light skin. So if you're not after that blown out look, turning it down to low will give you a more controlled picture. The lens has macro and your subject can be right up on top of the lens, creating a very nice look for flowers or other objects. Today, we're used to cameras doing burst rates of 30 frames per second. This camera does two frames total. That's all? That's all? Yup, that's it. You can't shoot movie mode. Let's take a look at the MPEG movie. This is MPEG movie. This is MPEG movie, just to see how the focus is. It looks so crappy because the file size is so small. This was the equivalent of like old cell phone video when it first came out. If you want to watch this, you really have to reduce the window size so it doesn't pixelate and blow out of proportion. The other movie option is called Clip Motion, and that just records a two frame, very tiny GIF, which is pretty useless. In the menu, you can also find a voice feature. Let's see what that is. You take a picture, and then you can narrate for a well, few seconds. So this is a little narration of this scene, and let's see how it goes. Well, so this is a little narration. Of this the scene. voice is fine, but the picture is blurry. Really want to talk about useless. There's a text feature, turns the image into black and white. You take a picture and it processes the image. It takes a few seconds after you press the shutter button and then it's got to process it again and then you just get a black and white mess. I think you need high contrast on a text to really use this. Now the 75 had 3.3 megapixels and it was jumped to 5 megapixels on the P10. Now 3.3 to 5 sounds like a very small difference, not even 2 megapixels. But remember, as a percentage, that's like 50% more. So way back in the day, going from 3.3 to 5 seemed like a big leap. The megapixel war had officially begun. Ah, another sweet sound. Here is the smaller, cuter P10. And this is actually pocketable, or at least jacket pocketable. The lens retracts nicely. Everything is a bit smaller though on the P10, including the rear screen, but the zoom is actually get you in a little tighter to 114 millimeter equivalent at the expense of the wide angle, which isn't quite as wide. The aperture definitely is slower, 2.8 to 5.6. So if you're in lower light situations, this might be a little more of a problem. Now the P10 replaced the nearly identical looking P8, but that one only had 3.2 megapixels. A feature street photographers may enjoy is the zone focus, which I was kind of surprised to see. So you could set focus distances. With all the features of modern cameras, many of them don't even have that today. Again, you have the standard silly negative art sepia. Solar rod, we haven't seen that since the 80s, have we? 
Well, as silly as that is, Sony did include a histogram feature on this camera, which is professional. And the movie mode feature actually has been improved quite a bit. This is the P10 MPEG movie. The resolution is actually 640 by 480, which is considered standard definition. So if you wanted to take a quick movie with the camera, now you could. Another setting in the moving image menu is something called multi-burst, and it looks like this. Nothing is moving here. I, I see absolutely no reason for this. Well, now, there must be a reason. Freud says there's a reason for everything, even me. The back of the P10 is bristling with buttons and controls. The viewfinder is an optical viewfinder. And one thing I noticed, when you play back your pictures, it takes a couple of seconds to click in and get to full resolution. So if you're watching your pictures back, at first you might think, oh, that wasn't in focus, but that's the issue there. The back has a charging port, AV out, and USB port. Now, unlike the 75, there's no aperture priority, shutter, or manual modes, so the P10 is more of a point-and-shoot camera than the 75. Now, the camera uses a much more uncommon battery than the S75, so you have to search around to find a replacement battery for this. I use a company called Castar, and you can find them easily online. The model is FC11. This camera is a couple years newer than the 75, so it does take the new Memory Stick Pro Media, and you can get a lot more pictures on that. You also can control saturation, contrast, so you have a little more control over your picture quality with this camera if you want to make adjustments. The fastest shutter speed is improved, doubled to 1 2,000th of a second, but the macro isn't quite as good. You have to be four inches from the lens in order to shoot close up. So let's take this camera out into the real world and see how it does. What if we compare the camera to a Panasonic Micro Four Thirds that came out 15 years later with a larger sensor? We'll use this GX9 as a comparison. the GX9, shot of the lake. We'll try the same shot with the P10. Now the larger sensor Panasonic camera should definitely give more of a background blur. That's one of the big advantages of that larger sensor. So in this scene here with the leaves in the foreground, take a look at the fire hydrant and the houses behind the leaves. Here it is in the GX9, you can see a little blur, whereas the P10, everything sort of looks in focus. So that's the trade-off right there of the larger sensor versus smaller. And in addition to the sensor size difference, naturally there was other electronic and technological improvements in 15 years. So let's compare these two cameras against each other. Can we see any difference? We're gonna test them on a nice fall day to get those fall colors. Here we have the P10 with a nice lake reflection of the trees. And you'll see the S75 it looks similar, just a little more contrast there. Here's the P10 on a wide shot and the S75. Notice like a color and white balance difference perhaps. Here in zoom is the P10. Here is the S75. Again, I'm saying a little more of a contrasty picture. And here in this shot of a wide angle shot, the S75 again is showing a bit more contrast and you see a white balance difference. In macro, the S75, you can get real close to these flowers. Whereas the P10, you are a bit restricted. You can only get this close. It's quite a bit of a difference. When you try to get closer, you're out of focus with the P10. The S75, you can really, really get tight with that lens. So what do you think? Do you think shooting with vintage cameras are cool? And what do you think about these two Sony vintage cameras? I have more reviews on the way, so stay tuned. 
If you want to get a different type of look and actually have a fun time doing it, I actually enjoyed shooting with these. It was sort of like a cross between shooting with an old film camera and shooting with a modern camera. This is like a nice happy medium where you can feel like you're shooting with something retro, but you get the satisfaction of getting your results right away. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you learned a thing or two, please hit like and do subscribe. More reviews like this on the way. And I'll see you in the next one.